Hey, I'm Willie from Fungi Ally here with Kevin from Fun Shrooming Company. Um, thanks for having us today. Yeah, of course. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, man. How'd you first get into the mushroom growing world? Well, I mean, I've been foraging since high school. Um, that was really kind of how I, I got into mushrooms. I was really just finding an interesting mushroom outside, going on the internet and figuring out that maybe I could eat it and taking that dumb risk. But ever since then, you know, it's just been kind of uh, always a hobby of, you know, learning about mushrooms and then learning how to grow them. Um, as far as like turning into a business, yeah. Um, it involved years of savings um, and not spending anything. And um, really, I remember one night I was just kind of on Craigslist, perusing the free section just for fun <laughs> and seeing so much land and so much, so many like trailers and just, sure. you know, I, I was like, maybe, you know, I know mushrooms can grow, can be grown in pretty much any indoor spot you can control the parameters in. You know, I've seen people do it in trucks and, uh, y you know, in old walk-in coolers and everything. So, you know, I saw all this, like, free space, and I was like, maybe I can't get something for free, but maybe I can actually make it work financially. So, started doing more research on, like, the actual business side of, you know, commercial mushroom growing. Yeah. And decided to take that plunge of just, you know, I'm young, I can throw away all my money into this, and maybe one day I'll make it back. And I did that, you know, was able to secure some loans, and um, I just got a shop in October of uh, 2019. I, I found this old auto shop that I had renovated and cleaned up all the auto grease and, mm -hmm. you know, put up plastic all over the walls. And that was my first spot. And uh, you know, I, was, I was growing you know, up to over 100 pounds of mushrooms a week there, but I definitely could not expand in there anymore. It was filled to the brim, so. Yeah. Yeah, and then I just moved into this spot. Um, in May of 2021, and it's a lot bigger, a lot more professional feeling. It's a nice, yeah. it's an old loading dock, I think, but it's you know been a warehouse space recently, and you know and I'm able, I'm able to grow a lot more mushrooms here. So we just kind of finished our move, and we're just ramping back up in production. Yeah. How is the moving process? It's pretty, it was pretty rough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Luckily, I had a lot of good friends and uh, you know, colleagues who were able to help me out. Uh, it definitely was a lot of cleaning and just kind of breaking down everything from the old spot and bringing it here uh, and involved a lot of late nights, early mornings and late nights. Yeah. You know, uh, I probably was staying here until you know, one in the morning on a lot of nights So, and still am sometimes. So it's, it's a challenge, but it, it feels good being somewhere uh, that I know actually fits fits the business and feels like somewhere I want to show people, you know? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And did you change many systems or anything when you moved over? Was there anything that you were like, oh, I'm so excited that this is going to be different? I think the, the storage of the mushrooms is going to be the biggest change. There's a walk-in cooler that was already here that we are working on kind of getting it up and running again, um, but the insulated box is there, and that's already a huge step ahead of where we were at. Um, so we get to you know move away from using just chest coolers, and uh, I think that'll help our sh our shelf life and you know maintain our freshness a little bit better. Um, other than that, just having a long this long space here, and it really gives us room to breathe. I was. Uh -huh really into maximizing, in my mind, it was maximizing efficiency uh, in terms of maybe more, more grow blocks and everything, but it was minimizing kind of efficiency in my, my movements. You know, I was having to squeeze into spaces that, right. my, you know, I, I wasn't working comfortably and I was bumping into mushrooms. Oh, like I just, you know, my, my butt just crushed a pound of mushrooms, you know, behind me. So. You know, having that, I don't think I valued that as much as I, as I do now. Right, having that extra space to like move around. And the operate. breathing room, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Where are some places that you've gotten like inspiration? Uh, either in like new systems or equipment or just ideas? Where, where are some of the places you turn to to kind of learn in this industry? 
I mean, in all honesty, it's all it all comes from other growers. I think it always has been. Um, a lot of my learning was coming, especially in the beginning, from from books and YouTube and forums and trying to get consulting with other people like like you or other growers. Um, you know, Fungi Ally. I remember like you know going on your website a lot. <laughs> in all honesty, yeah. in the beginning, just kind of figuring out how to, how to lay things out. Um, and then more recently, you know, in this past year and a half of growing, it's been a lot of learning things the hard way. Um, you know, one, one of our big changes was going, you know, how were we inoculating our blocks before we were using scoops and we were maybe half-assing how we were cleaning them or, or you know, just the fact that it's just another uh, vector for contamination. Yeah. There's always some sort of risk there. So we, we, you know, we said, let's try something else. So you know, we tried just doing bag pours, and maybe it's not as precise a measurement um, for how much spawn you're using, but it's like the money I'm losing from a little extra spawn going in there versus the money I would have lost from a contaminated block. Um, just kind of, it made sense to, to switch that process over. Right. So you know, it's a, it's a lot of just kind of trying to trying to look look at my myself critically and, and see like what am I doing that is not the best, even if it's comfortable. You know? Yeah, so yeah. Trying to stay on top of that. Uh huh. Uh huh. Cool. Do you have any recommendations for like beginning farmers or people interested in? And jumping in to uh, growing mushrooms, yeah. what would you say to them? Other than like, don't do it near me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great point. <laughs> no, I think that there's room to grow in the industry as a whole, um, for sure. Especially now that people are more interested and open to mushrooms yeah. um, as food or medicine. I mean, I think I'm going to say two kind of contradictory pieces of advice. One would be learn from as many growers as you can, um, read, read tons of books, watch YouTube videos, find growers that you can, you know, maybe not your co direct competitors, go to a different state or something and yeah. try to tour somewhere or pay for consulting or a class, you know, several classes. I took, you know, classes at the university on mushroom biology before I did this. Um, so learning from as many people as you can. And then my other big piece of advice that might contradict that a little is don't take everyone at face value either. Um, uh -huh. You know, if you ask 100 mushroom growers how to grow mushrooms, they're going to get 100 different answers. Everyone's got their own different processes. Uh, everyone's got what makes sense with their systems and what they're comfortable with uh, and what makes sense financially. And yeah. you need to also, you know, you do need to learn things the hard way, unfortunately. You can kind of make it a little less painful by taking good notes, by just you know keeping track of things and uh, and when you experiment with something, if something's you're troubleshooting, is you know don't try to change everything at once. Change one uh -huh. aspect at a time, uh -huh. and uh -huh. that way you kind of go at it scientifically. Yes. You know? Yes. Yeah, that's one of the cool things I found of like seeing different mushroom farms. It's almost like the personality and the situation of the mushroom farmer like comes through that yeah. that mushroom farm. Yeah. Um, so it's totally it's like each place is different, have these di different little tweaks and you know like personality. Yeah. I mean some people have great success growing outdoors, you know, and yeah. they just want to do that and you know you, you might run into one set of, a set of issues there where bugs might be eating your mushrooms or like it might be the right. temperature is you know messing with them too much uh, and then people like me growing indoors all of a sudden you have a lot of technology to deal with and uh, right. it's it's more things to kind of keep organized in my head and all these parameters to kind of interplay together so everyone's got their own different style um, you got to find what works for you and you got to find what uh, is gonna make the most sense for your business yeah yeah is there, do you have like a favorite part of the whole process of mushroom cultivation? Okay, so does it have to be the cultivation or just the whole business? Yeah, it can be any. Yeah, Honestly, when I sell to the farmer's market or if I make a home delivery um, yeah. and someone tells me like, wow, like these mushrooms look great, like all of a sudden it feels worth it, you know? Um, I, I don't dislike 
mm-hmm. the actual like process, the, the, the physical parts of it. I really like harvesting mushrooms, um, yeah. even if it is tedious at times or if I'm stuck doing it late at night. Um, and I like inoculation because I can kind of just put on a podcast or listen to some music and you know have time to think or something. Um, and sterilizing is fine and everything. Um, you know, it's it's a workout too, so that's nice. But really, it's the, what makes it worth it is when I know that I'm making a product that my, either a chef tells me they think is beautiful, or a customer at the farmers market will come back to me and say like, "Wow, these mushrooms are amazing." So yeah, that's when I know I'm not just like you know, doing it because I'm a crazy person. I'm doing it because I'm actually putting <laughs> right. something into the world. Right. Know? Like, yeah. looks good, it's feeding people. And exactly. Like, I'm proud of this. This is great. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's not, yeah, finally you can see, feel some pride at that moment. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's amazing how many steps there are. I think at one time I like, looked at how many steps there are in, the, like, the whole process. Yeah. There's something like 65 individual <laughs> steps. You know, I haven't like, written pick it up down, the bag, put thing sh- in, yeah. put other thing yes. in. It's just like, yeah, to finally get the mushroom too, so and then be like, whoa, this is awesome. Yes, yeah. Good, I think, good um, feeling. yeah, you take it for granted. And even before it gets to me, like, how did my, my wood pallets get made? How did I get my, my soy holes get made? Or my bags, you know? I mean, I communicate yeah. with the people who make the bags and seeing their process. And it's, uh-huh. it, it's a huge supply chain. And uh, yeah. it's really, it can blow your mind when you really think about, like, you know, uh, like what went into this food on my plate. And I think that's what has really pushed this farm to table movement, mm. uh, especially here in Vermont. It's so strong here and people really, I think don't take it for granted as much because they're so surrounded by it and connected to it, so. Yeah. Have you gotten good local support with yeah. growing mushrooms? And- yeah, we started growing, our first batch of mushrooms we harvested it in January of 2020. So we only had a couple of months before the pandemic hit, wow. and uh, our business model was just going to be restaurants. So we did a lot of pivoting, a lot of marketing on Facebook, uh, you know, word of mouth, and just talking with people. And um, yeah. you know, we we did have that support, and like I'm beyond grateful for it. That you know, I had chefs who were like, I can't help you right now, but I want to help you later on. So I just had to stick it out for those few months until outdoor seating happened and restaurants got that little boost last summer. Yeah, I was able to get into grocery stores and make good connections with, with those folks. Um, and, you know, I was doing a lot of home delivery at the time. You know, yeah. seniors, you know, who didn't want to go to the grocery store, or, you know, new Americans who, like, you know, wanted a mushroom that they were used to eating growing up in their home country and they couldn't mm-hmm. find here. And, you know, that I provide a little specialty mushroom or something, and um, you know, it's the, it was definitely it was rough, and there were many many moments where I was just like, this is not going to work, yeah, <laughs> or I need to like yeah. put this on the back burner. But uh, you know, and, and uh, I was working some other stuff through it, but um, you know, we powered through, and since last summer, um, things have been much more consistent to the point cool. where we we were able to grow and and expand a little bit. So yeah, yeah. What's what's been your typical strategy of like approaching a new chef? If you're like, oh, I, I, you know, okay, I've got extra mushrooms, I want to sell these. How do you go about building that new relationship? I, I, you know, my generation is addicted to Instagram. I didn't use Instagram much personally um, yeah. growing up, or you know, when I, you know, just before I started the farm even. So. Um, it, that was how I've been building out the business. A little bit of Facebook, but a lot of Instagram. Yeah. And that got me so connected with everyone. I feel yeah. like I know what's, what's, you know what's happening in Burlington and like you know the greater food scene in Vermont. Um, so, you know, I'd, I'd follow restaurants, but I'd also try to connect with the chefs if I can find their accounts and just right. say hi, you know, or, you know, and I'm not like just trying to be like try to schmooze them but like you know find something you genuinely appreciate about that chef's style or their food um and really you know just say like here like i want to drop off some mushrooms for you like you know it's on the house and just try it out and let me know what you think and if it doesn't work it doesn't work um but you know if you're genuine about it you know there's a good chance they'll appreciate it and uh oftentimes it's just a lot of DMing people and yeah. a lot of you know commenting on people's posts and interacting with them and 
and you know, it really like my initial goal with starting the mushroom farm was how do I get people to appreciate mushrooms? Very uh, wide scale vision. Yes. Yes. And you know, I, I was you know I see it in high scale restaurants. Um, well, chefs always loved forage mushrooms, and I think that's been on the rise. And I think when someone tries out a new mushroom at a restaurant, or you know, when I tried out that brand new mushroom when I was in high school just that I foraged, you know, all of a sudden it's a learning experience. You know, and, yeah. and it's, first it's like that that pleasure. You know, you get that great flavor, and then it becomes like, well, what is this? How do I get some to make it at home? You know, right. and so it's it's education starts with with food here. So. Cool. Um, so my goal, that's why I just wanted to work with chefs and, you know, and it, it's worked out so far. Yeah. You know, I've been able to connect with a lot of amazing people here. I love that, like accessing the mind and the learning through the belly. Exactly. Like, cool, you yeah. like the food and then you're going to be curious about it and yeah. want to engage more. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I think that that's how a lot of it happens uh, with mushrooms. Is, mm -hmm. People don't realize, you know, people don't get into like the books or the movies or whatever. Um, you know, that educate about mycology as a whole until they've had an experience with a mushroom, whether it be like f food or supplement or something. Right. Um, right. You know, and, and then you learn about the mushrooms that might not be great for human use necessarily, but just interesting in its own right, in its own biology. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah important environmentally or from exactly. like remediation. Or exactly. Cool. Um, what's something you're excited about moving forward? Like a place you imagine your business going or just the mushroom industry in general going? Or? Oh, there's so many things. I'll start with the business. Like what I'm excited for us to grow into is to get into a point where we're, we're consistently growing, you know, like over 200 pounds a week yeah. um, and able to bring it to as many people as possible locally. Um, I'd like to also get to a point where, where we have a steady grow kit sales uh, through the pandemic. That's been an excellent hobby people have taken up and especially after the last Christmas, um, people have been coming to us for grow kits and I love being that kind of local Vermont supplier for that. There's not many people selling grow kits around here. Um, and I, it's always me, you know, doing customer service. So it's like when people want to troubleshoot, like they're talking to like the guy who actually is doing it for like professionally so and right. I love just being able to provide that so I want to grow that out perhaps do some like uh, value-added stuff mushroom powders spices and jerkies um, and then as far as the industry like the greater industry um, I think there's a lot of amazing things that we're going to be seeing happen in the next decade or two um, first thing is fungi that are not necessarily fruiting bodies like mushrooms that are being used for food, um, being grown in fermenters or something. Uh, there's you know brands like Kjorn or uh, Meaty in Colorado yeah. that are doing that where they grow mycelium and it's really nutritionally dense and uh, can be put into like different different shapes you know to imitate various types of meats and uh, you know it's, it's kind of taking, you know, pushing us away from like animal based uh, agriculture and, you know, it's better for the earth, better for yeah. the animals and, you know, it's good for your health as well. So um, that's an amazing part of the industry that I'm seeing grow a lot. And then uh, the last thing is also just like the stuff that people are doing in the hobby, well, both as a hobby and professionally, researching mushrooms and putting it out in the world, oftentimes for free about how to like try to cultivate morels indoors or yeah. you know honing in on like truffle farming um, I think you know the mycorrhizal mushroom growing that in a controlled setting is often thought of as like unattainable or like a holy grail like right. or you know all, like it's never going to happen and, like I never say never you know I mean we've made so many strides to this point so it might not happen anytime soon that we're getting mycorrhizal mushrooms grown indoors or at least in a controlled, um, you know, orchard or something. Yeah. But I think uh, it could happen. That'd be amazing, like yeah. growing black trumpets. Black and trumpet chanterelles. chanterelles and, yeah. 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 Oh, I, my God. One day, I think. Yeah. Um, I think people are doing a lot of good science. So, yeah. And that's what it is. You just keep doing the research. So. Yeah. 
Cool. Thanks for having us today. Thanks absolutely. for talking. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, keep yeah. keep growing. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Will do. <laughs>